In July 31st of 1999, the now defunct Acclaim Entertainment released what would become a sort of a sleeper hit or a hidden gem of the PC racing scene, and that is Revolt. Revolt was an awesome game for its time, and was played by people for a long time afterwards because it was just a lot of fun. It was actually notably ahead of its days in a couple of important ways that are sort of interesting for a very arcadey racing game that really plays a lot like a kart racer because of the, you know, track setups, the power-ups, and uh, weapons and things like that. It had uh, pretty impressive physics that actually still hold up fairly well because, of course, you're driving RC cars is the whole idea, and those have a pretty specific feel to them, and actually emulating that is difficult, but they managed to pull it off in a really impressive way for the time. Uh, and, like I said, even today, playing the game, it actually feels pretty good. A lot of the cars have very interesting feels to them, lots of uh, weight without feeling actually sluggish. It's a very fast and frenetic game without being uh, weightless or floaty. And, of course, that can be a problem with racing games. So, the physics were notably ahead of their time in terms of the racing, but also, graphically, it was kind of a powerhouse, interestingly enough. You wouldn't really think of racing games, generally speaking, especially back then, uh, being made to push, you know, graphical boundaries, but Revolt actually did in two main ways, one of which was its uh, its particles and its uh, things like persistent skid marks on tracks, the sort of uh, decals and particles like that. They were actually pretty nice looking and, like I said, interestingly persistent. But mainly also were the reflections, very accurate and really nice looking real-time reflections on things like marble floors and the like for your car and all the other cars and all the projectiles and things all around you, it made for a very pretty game that genuinely looked ahead of its time, and uh, especially in 1999 was really, really nice looking. It had a pretty large number of tracks to go through, it had a lot of different cars to choose from, each of which felt very different, and a good selection of power-ups during the races to use everything from bottle rockets to uh, ball bearings to leave behind you to screw up everyone uh, behind you, and even things like the uh, the big sort of Tesla coil-like deal that allows you to zap all the RC cars as you go by and disable them momentarily. It was a lot of fun, and it had a couple of different modes as well, but of course it's sort of uh, single race and campaign racing were very much the focus, and were very well fleshed out for the time. And of course all of this will lead to the idea of a long-standing community that likes to play the game, and sometimes even for years after games like this are released, especially on PC, there will be players for them. However, this can lead to some problems, as you've probably experienced before if you've ever tried to play anything that's too old. Uh, there's this sort of awkward age of PC games where if it's a particularly older game, like something that would run in DOS or Windows 95, that sort of era, we have things like DOSBox to actually emulate that. And uh, although it sometimes takes a little bit of tweaking, it's generally speaking not that difficult to actually run something from that era now. We have methods to actually make it work that have been, you know, developed and thought out for quite a long time, and we can generally get games of that age to work on modern systems. However, there's this sort of time period in like the Windows 98 to Windows XP era where there are other problems that aren't quite as easy to solve, and games from this time, like for instance Revolt, can be notoriously difficult to actually get running on modern systems and, and stay stable. Any sorts of problems can be things like 16-bit uh, executables, which are oftentimes not recognized or not very well utilized by modern systems, and of course the idea of things like uh, resolutions having changed quite a lot since then, so uh, oftentimes older games will not support modern resolutions, and the resolutions they do support will sometimes look very strange on modern monitors and using modern graphics drivers. And then, of course, there's the idea that some games were, of course, coded for very specific frame rates and or very specific processor speeds, and when you get modern processors that look like crazy future tech in comparison to what was actually uh, asked for at the time, sometimes the games just simply don't know what to do with them and run in a very uh, unstable way or entirely too fast to be playable at all. And this is where really nice services, for instance, like GOG come in that will often do a lot of the footwork for the consumer and actually creating uh, patches and just making games work better on modern systems than they would by default if you were to just find your old disc or what have you. And uh, they're excellent services to keep around, not only just because they're very pro-consumer and just a really nice storefront in general, but also because of the sort of archival and uh, like gaming history nature of what it means to preserve these older titles, especially in ways that can not only be looked at but actually played 
on modern systems, and that's really, really useful. And uh, being able to actually even give money to people that still deserve it for those old good games is also a really nice thing to be able to do. So GOG is awesome in that respect. I'm not sponsored by GOG, by the way. I figured I should probably say that just in case I just really like their service. And in the case of Revolt, that's really exactly what happened. The still-present community at the time actually developed what was known as the 1.2 beta patch for Revolt to actually keep it working on modern systems, and Juji actually, with permission, uh, utilized that patch to help them get a version up and running that can be bought and played on modern systems, and uh, it was a really good thing. It was awesome that they did that, and of course, the community around the game was then integrated into the GOG community as well, so the whole thing was just one big... Uh, group of people that just wanted to preserve Revolt and uh, still play it, which is awesome. However, sometimes there are problems with this. Like I mentioned, a claim went bust uh, back in, I think it was around 2004, and when that happens, of course, any company's IP are going to be sold off or auctioned off to other companies for them to sit on and or use at a later date. And that's what happened to Revolt, and uh, a company eventually did get a hold of the rights for Revolt and everything related to it, and actually made a, like an iOS and an Android port of the game. However, in doing so, when the company actually got these rights, they utilized the 1.2 beta patch pieces that were developed by the community and helped with by GOG, I believe, and uh, they did this without the permission of any of the modders or any of the people on the scene. I suppose maybe thinking that they didn't need their permission because they weren't the developers or something, but that's not the case, you can't just do that. And so due to the, all this misunderstanding that happened and all of the, the nonsense involved in this, as you can probably imagine, the game was actually taken down off of GOG. And this leaves us with the unfortunate situation of how do you play the game now <laughs> that you can't get a hold of this that easily? Now this leads us to the situation of a source port. So what is a source port exactly? You've probably heard the term before in things like, for instance, uh, GL Quake or ZDoom or uh, GZ Doom, things like that. Those are source ports. A source port is essentially what happens when a, uh, a user base, a community or what have you, wants to basically continue the patching and or development, especially in custom form, of a game that they don't have the source code for or that they want to port to modern systems and have it work better. Because, as I mentioned, there's lots of problems with these older games. A source port often helps to fix them by uh, basically converting the older stuff in general, the plugins, the everything that actually made it operate, and uh, tune it to function on newer, often more open standards instead. So, for Revolt, we have what's called RVGL. RVGL uses the idea of uh, taking open standard plugins and things like that and actually altering the game to use them. So we have things like the uh, graphical system actually being supported by OpenGL now. So uh, it works with modern graphics standards, uh, display drivers, etc. Anything that would normally use OpenGL can use it. Uh, we have OpenAL as the audio source. We have SDL2 as the plugin for input, so you can use things like keyboards and mice, and also controllers, joysticks, probably racing wheels. I mean, you can even use controllers and things like uh, a PS4 controller, for instance, that would not have even been close to existing back in 1999, and it'll work just fine. And we also have Enet, which is a uh, networking interface, basically, that allows things like peer-to-peer uh, -peer servers to actually still be set up and utilized without any sort of weirdness from third parties and the like. So basically we have a completely retooled game that uses all open source uh, plugins and, and everything to actually get it working on modern systems and keep it uh, usable by people and also to support the creation of custom content. So you have lots of mods, you have custom tracks, you have custom cars, you have everything like that. And uh, RVGL is really kind of a blessing for the game because of course with it sort of the closed down nature of what uh, new IP owners can do, it's nice to have an open way to actually still play the game and without like breaking out a Windows 98 PC or something and uh, also be able to of course create custom content for it. And one of the cooler parts of RVGL is how supportive it is of modern amenities in terms of PC gaming. You know, it even supports things like uh, particularly widescreen resolutions that have, wouldn't even have existed back at the time. And you can even play it in 4K, so you can play a game from 1999 with a controller from 2016 on a giant 4K TV if you want to. Which kind of blows my mind a little bit, but that's the point of things like this, is allowing such things. And uh, they've done a really good job with it. They have preserved the notable physics of the game, so it still very much feels the same. 
all while allowing it to actually run on, uh, <clears throat> on modern CPUs in a way that the original actually could not. There were even console ports of Revolt, and in my opinion, most of them were not very good because of huge frame rate issues and uh, the lack of certain bits of content that the PC version got, except for the Dreamcast port, which was actually pretty sweet at the time. But uh, those ports, especially the Dreamcast port, did actually have some exclusive content. For one, they had uh, a track, at least one track, depending on the port you're talking about, that wasn't in the PC game. It also had several exclusive cars to it, and they have been able to port all of that uh, console port exclusive content to RVGL so you can experience it on PC now. And even uh, split screen is actually on RVGL because the original PC version of Revolt did not have split screen multiplayer, it just had like networking multiplayer. But of course, being on console, those did have split screen because that's kind of necessary almost at the time. So that experience of two to four player split screen is actually available now on RVGL, which is a really neat thing because, I mean, come on. Split screen games on PC, that's not all that common anymore, unfortunately. They've even given it support for other modern graphical amenities like uh, anisotropic filtering for the textures and better, uh, smoother, more nice looking, less blurry forms of anti aliasing that are, you know, more modern and nice. And uh, there's even an improvement to the AI. The AI of the bot racers are just better in general, and this is, of course, somewhat necessary if you think about it for things like custom tracks, which are, of course, going to be larger and more complicated in certain ways oftentimes than what could have come with the game because there's just so much time for people to create all this new stuff. So better AI is kind of important in that aspect, but really even on the basic tracks, it's still really nice. And uh, it's a, a notable improvement actually. Not that the AI was originally bad, I would say. It's just, it's a bit more vicious now. Revolt is a game that when brought up to a specific uh, person or to a, a person of a specific age, will very much sort of bring about pangs of nostalgia and remembering that soundtrack and remembering, you know, jetting through a, uh, a track that was like a giant form of a grocery store and things like that because it was just really fun and a lot of people remember it very fondly. So being able to actually come back to a game of that age and uh, see if your nostalgia holds up and even uh, enjoy new custom stuff that was made by people who uh, have never actually left the game is really, really important, I think, for the PC gaming scene. I love seeing this sort of archival and preservation stuff, so whenever I see source ports of older games, especially kind of hidden gems like Revolt, it's just, it's really, uh, it's really nice to see, you know? So RVGL is actually available in the uh, description below this for free. You can actually just download it and play it. I'll, of course, make sure to link you to the resources that you'll need. And uh, if you want, you can just download the base experience and just play the game more or less as you remember it from back then, only new, <laughs> basically. But uh, you can also choose to download things like packs of new cars. There are hundreds of new cars that all handle very differently and are all a lot of fun. Although I will admit that sometimes, as you can probably see in the uh, footage in the background, as it's been a long time since I played this game, I kind of suck at it, but also as uh, some of these new cars handle in very different ways depending on the tracks that you're on, uh, sometimes you're in for a bit of a surprise in terms of cars that can corner like 90 degree turns with just tapping the button and things like that. You may want to use a controller, I'm not sure, with a lot of the new vehicles. Some of the, uh, the physics are still, like I said, very present and very good, but when you're talking about hundreds of new cars, you're talking about a lot of differences in the physics between each one, so it's going to take some getting used to. And, uh, of course, you can download packs of new tracks as well, and there are tons of new tracks. Some of them are very much in the spirit of the original wonderful tracks from Revolt, being the fact that your RC cars, you know, a lot of the tracks are oversized giant versions of things, so you can ride through someone's backyard as they're kicking stuff around, or <laughs> go through a, a giant temple as, like, a, a very small car and stuff like that. And some of them are uh, remakes of classic and memorable things, like, for instance, Mario Kart tracks are in there. And uh, even uh, other game modes, you know, tracks for other game modes, like uh, arena game modes, or tracks that are just for racing without power-ups and things like that. There's just basically something for everyone's tastes in terms of the actual content that can be downloaded, which is, of course, natural for modding. That's how modding works. That's how it always is. But uh, when we're talking about an older game, something from all the way back in 1999, it's still a, a bit of a surprise to see just how versatile everything still is or, or was. And uh, it's really cool to see people, even now, still working on it, still holding regular races online. You can uh, find servers still to play multiplayer if you want to and set up your own little group. It's really neat. So with things like uh, support for higher resolution textures, for things like uh, custom animations for cars, 
for uh, just like shadow and uh, sound customization, even things that specific and, and granular, really, for a racing game. For things like uh, new arena levels and time trial modes, for things like just new uh, texture transparencies to make things look nice and clean, for a uh, grading of uh, tracks and cars for you to actually, you know, peruse and download the various things that are rated to be very, very highly appreciated by the community, and even just other general stuff like new special effects and uh, the removal of a lot of the limits on what was previously there for custom content, allowing people to make tracks that are significantly larger and much, much more complex than what was in the game uh, to start with, which were already pretty fun. Now is the time to revisit Revolt. If uh, you haven't played it in a long time, or if you've never played it and think it looks interesting, maybe you've heard of it or something, revisiting it is really probably the best experience you could ask for. And uh, even if you just want to get into making content yourself, there's actually a plugin available for Blender if you want to actually start making cars and, and tracks and all the like. So yeah, it's it's a good time to visit older games and uh, still have a lot to say about them, which is pretty interesting to me, even though this had some, some difficulties that made it unnecessarily difficult to actually uh, distribute to people again on GOG, unfortunately. There's still a community like this that's willing to put in the effort to make a source port playable for everyone. So, like I mentioned, the uh, the links will be in the description to the RVGL website, and you can check out the documentation and all the downloads and things like that, and, and uh, try it out for yourself. Revolt is a very good racing game from the past, and uh, it's deserving of remembrance and archival in a form like this. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to share them, and I'll see you next time.